The other week I made a video about a man named Elon Musk, a guy who is what I call the greatest disappointment of all time. Someone who I personally had thought had potential and then squandered it and squandered it and squandered it, became a more and more mean and exploitative person the more power he's gotten and has just completely used his power for evil rather than for good, turning into basically a, a human supervillain. Does anyone else feel like Elon Musk is becoming a supervillain right now? It really does feel that way. <laughs> and in today's video, we are going to talk about how he is still somehow continuing to get worse. Everyone having fun? Today's video topic, is Elon Musk starting a cult? Let's go! What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy and welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today we are once again going to be talking about a businessman who is not using his business powers for good, Mr. Elon Musk, a man among the boss bro ranks. We talk about a lot of boss bros on this channel, the male counterpart to boss babes, people like Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins, those types of people who in a lot of cases I have accused of having somewhat of a cult-like influence over their followers in the past. And I definitely think that Elon Musk is putting himself in that circle, if not already a part of it. And that's not necessarily to say that he's going into the self-help world, but more so that what he's considering starting here that we're going to talk about seems like it, it could be like an actual cult, like a legitimate cult. So we're going to talk about that in just a second, but if you're new here, please do take a minute to subscribe because multiple times a week I put out new videos talking about books, the book publishing world, the business behind book publishing, the writing process, and then the business world and small business ownership and what that life is like, including ways to be more ethical in your own business ownership and ways to spot unethical businesses and boss bros and scammy grifters and things like that. Sign me up. So if that's something you're interested in, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the notification bell because new videos are coming out. And if you're interested in learning more of the behind the scenes process of how I go about running a business, how I go about managing my time as a writer, putting out multiple books per year while also putting out multiple videos per week and also running my own company and things like that, then you can go ahead and take a look at my Patreon, which is linked in the description below, where once to twice a week, I put out behind the scenes blog post as well as off for other incentives there as well. Speaking of which, today's video was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Patreon supporters' names are on the screen, and I want to thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. If you guys take a look in the description below around where my Patreon is linked, you can see where my $5 a month and up supporters can link their own social media page, their own small business, their own cause they want to support, whatever they like. So go ahead and check them out as well, and I appreciate all of your support. Now let's get into talking about Elon Musk. So a couple weeks ago, I put out a video about how Elon Elon Musk has been a very cruel boss to his employees at Twitter, and I specifically detailed an exchange he had with a man named Haralder Thorleifsson, who goes by Hallie on Twitter, an Icelandic businessman whose business was bought out by Twitter and has been an employee of them since then. The ways that Elon Musk was not only ableist to him online by publicly disclosing his disability, accusing him of faking it and doing other kinds of awful things, but just publicly abusing him, fighting with him online, being just overall mean and cruel to his employees that he theoretically should be supporting and things like that. So you can check out that video if you haven't seen it already where I go over that situation in detail. But I did want to say, I was a little sad to see some of the responses to that video. And the reason being, I, I will say overall, the responses were good in the sense that I think everyone pretty much agreed that Elon Musk was in the wrong in that situation and that he was being horrible to Hallie and that he was being a terrible and cruel boss and that he is becoming a bad guy if he hasn't always been a bad guy from day one. But I was a little sad to see the responses because in that video, I did admit that I used to be a fan of Elon Musk in the past. Not right now, not within the last couple years even, because the more I've been learning about him, and it seems like even more and more so recently, he's been kind of leaning into this more right-wing type of persona, whereas in the past, he very much presented himself as, I want to run this Tesla car company because I want to have electric cars become mainstream. I want to be part of Ways to Save the Planet. He really did seem like he was somewhat in a center-left position, but beyond, like, political alignment itself, he seemed to be someone who actually cared about the planet and about innovation and things like that. And that 
maybe was a lie, maybe was a ruse he was doing the whole time. As some people mentioned, it could be that he just used to have really good PR and that he doesn't anymore. That's absolutely possible as well, because the way he presented himself 10 years ago is nothing like the way he's presented now. And I, I don't know if maybe I was just being stupid. And there are a lot of people out there who say, you know, I've known for years, I've known for decades that this guy is awful. And that's great. I'm glad that you were able to be able to tell that about people and that you are that skeptical. One of the things that I talk about a lot on this channel is the ways that kind of we're all naturally indoctrinated into hustle culture just by nature of the way that the world works, just by nature of the way that we're put with this message that, okay, you want to work super hard all the time. You should feel guilty if you're not working. Hustle, 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 hustle. And the world is set up this way so that we can be taken advantage of by employers so that people who want to make money off of us can take advantage of that. That's kind of the whole basis behind the anti-multi-level marketing component of this channel as well, which is that these MLM type companies often recruit people and scam those people. And then those people turn around and scam someone else, but those people who were recruited into it are also a victim of hustle culture and of the con that they were roped into as well as then perpetuating it. And that's the type of vicious cycle that we see regularly happening. I get a lot of people in my DMs a lot who say things like, Savvy, I feel really ashamed to admit this, but I used to be a big fan of Rachel Hollis until you showed me that she was supporting these MLM companies and that she was body shaming people and doing all of these awful things. I'd had no idea and I used to be a big fan. And I always tell people, don't feel bad about that. The whole thing we call out is the way that business gurus and grifters intentionally manipulate us and intentionally put that message onto us. I have people who say, I used to pay, I paid for a Tony Robbins conference in the past. I paid $5,000 to go to a Tony Robbins conference because I legitimately thought that he was going to help me unlock my potential and now I feel stupid. And I tell people, don't feel stupid. The whole thing is that he is a manipulator who conned you into that. So I was just a little sad to see a lot of people in my comments saying things like, Savvy, I'm disappointed that you were ever a fan of Elon Musk because I was able to tell from the beginning that this man was a grifter. I was able to tell from the beginning that this man was unethical and abusive. And it's like, maybe you have better skepticism when it comes to some people than I do. Maybe I didn't research him thoroughly enough five, 10 years ago. That's fine. And I admit that I was wrong for having been a fan of him. But I think we also need to keep in mind that part of what's on my channel is this idea that we do get conned by these type of business gurus and that the idea that we can admit when we're wrong and admit that someone we used to be a fan of is is a bad person or at least has revealed themselves to be a bad person that we should be encouraging that that's how i see it of course you guys are welcome to leave whatever comments you want i'm not going to delete any of them and i'm not here to start fights or anything it was just a little disappointing to me because this idea of like hustle culture deconstruction and boss babe deconstruction is a huge part of what my channel is about and i've been pretty open about the fact that in the past i really really was invested in hustle culture. I mean, I, my first big video on this channel was my review of Girl, Wash Your Face, which I put up after reading the book genuinely the first time because I wanted to learn about how to be a better boss babe and things like that. And as I started to see that type of rhetoric fall apart, that's when I realized I had to kind of expose what was going on here and then seeing it tie into the MLM industry and things like that. So overall, I just wanted to say that, yeah, I was a fan of Elon Musk in the past and I'm not now. I've also admitted before that when I was a teenager, I was a fan of Dr. Phil because I got emotionally invested in him after his show taught me what OCD was, leading to me later being diagnosed with it by an actual psychologist when I was in my 20s. But just because I had that emotional investment, I later had to realize that Dr. Phil was doing a lot of bad things. He was platforming a lot of bad people. He was promoting MLM style diet supplements and things like that. And he was being basically abusive to a lot of teenagers in the troubled teen industry. There's so many things wrong with him. And I realized I was wrong and I admitted that. I also never publicly supported him on my platform. Same thing with Elon Musk. I've never like publicly made a pro Elon Musk video. I've been making videos saying the things Elon Musk is doing wrong on this channel and on Your Morning Guru. I have like I have like 10 live streams about how much Elon Musk sucks on your morning guru. So I was just surprised to see a lot of people being like, Savvy, this is a huge disappointment that you used to be a fan of Elon Musk. Yeah, I used to. I'm not anymore. It's not like Mitch Hedberg where it's like, I still, <laughs> I, I used to, but I still do too. It's not like that. Okay. So anyway, just with that aside, I, I wanted to say that real quick, but now let's talk about what more terrible shit Elon Musk is doing so that we can continue to expose what a terrible guy he is. All right. So is he starting a cult? Well, this article just came out. Now, recently, we're going to take a look at an article from People Magazine from at the time that I'm filming this just a couple days ago. So this is very recent. Let's take a look 
at what's going on here. All right, here we go. Elon Musk is reportedly building a Texas utopia for his SpaceX and Boring Company employees. This is the bad place. <laughs> Leaders on the project are attempting to incorporate a town in Bastrop County about 35 miles from Austin and name it Snailbrook. So this doesn't sound good, okay? Whenever you have a billionaire, whenever you have a CEO, whenever you have someone who has a lot of people working for them and they want to own a town, and they want to own a town for their companies and their employees to live in. Run away! Run away! Let's just take a look at, at what PBS calls this. Company towns. All right, let's talk about company towns. On the off chance that there's anyone here who doesn't know what company towns are, we're gonna talk about them real quick, okay? In remote locations such as railroad construction sites, lumber camps, turpentine camps, or coal mines, jobs often existed far from established towns. As a pragmatic solution, the employer sometimes developed a company town where an individual company owned all the buildings and businesses. In some situations, company towns developed out of a paternalistic effort to create a utopian workers village interesting language about how elon musk may want to create a utopia for his companies utopian workers village could it couldn't be this at all Churches, schools, libraries, and other amenities were constructed in order to encourage healthy communities and productive workers. Saloons or other places or services believed to be negative influences were prohibited. Cool, let's, let's be the fun police on top of the regular police. In other cases, the company's motivations were less ideal. The remoteness and lack of transportation prevented workers from leaving for other jobs or to buy from other independent merchants. In some cases, companies paid employees with a script that was only good at company stores. We've always talked about, we've talked about company stores before on this channel too, in the context context of how a lot of MLM companies are a rebranding of company stores. So we've heard about like company stores and coal mining towns and stuff where there's a store that's owned by the coal mining company and everyone who works for them basically is only eligible to buy things at the company store because they're paid in currency that the company store accepts and then the company store has a monopoly on it so everything is operating within that company that company that pays you also profits off of you and we can look at a company like amway and see how they're doing something very similar right a company like amway where they want you to use all their products. You're selling their products. You're supposedly going to make money off of their products. They call you an independent business owner, but also you have a certain quota you have to fill and they encourage you to fill some of it by using their products, by replacing all the paper towels in your house with their brand of paper towels, using their brand of toothpaste, eating their brands of snacks, things like that, until your whole life is consumed within this company and they're profiting off of you way more than they're ever going to be paying you. It sounds a lot like these company stores, which were extremely, manipulative and bad for working class people and now it sounds like that's kind of what elon musk is going for here too but let's let's continue with this Without external competition, housing costs and groceries in company towns could become exorbitant, and the workers built up large debts that they were required to pay off before leaving. Company towns often housed laborers in fenced-in or guarded areas with the excuse that they were protecting laborers from unscrupulous traveling salesmen. In the South, free laborers and convict laborers were often housed in the same spaces and suffered equally terrible mistreatment. So in some cases, company towns were basically a rebranding of slavery, and in other cases, they were just regular exploitation of working class people. Could Elon Musk possibly be doing this? Guys, do you remember a couple years ago? Th this was when I was already starting to lose my respect for Elon Musk, by the way. A couple years ago, he talked about how he wanted to bring people to space, but in space, there were going to be some people who wouldn't be able to afford to go to space. So he was going to like loan them a lot of money to go to space and then they could work it off by paying for him. And people were like, wait, 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 wait. Are people saying that Elon Musk wants to bring indentured servitude as a concept to space? What? I was kind of like, what? Dude, what? That was, that was pretty crazy. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! So let's take a look at more of this and see if this is going to become a company town or worse, a whole cult. You remember when, com when uh, like the Jonestown cult, like when that happened, that was originally branded to the cult members as like, we're going to live in this town all together and it's going to be a utopia for us to all work together and create this ideal society. There's a fascinating video out there that I highly recommend everyone watch by the channel Defunct Land. Defunct Land is one of my favorite channels and he has a video out about how Walt Disney originally wanted to make Epcot like this type of thing. Like Walt Disney's original vision for Epcot was to have this big town where everyone lived there. Like Epcot could have been a cult, you guys. 
It could have if it hadn't become an amusement park instead. So we can all we can all thank whoever at Disney decided it should be an amusement park instead. All right, let's talk about Elon Musk over here. Elon Musk is reportedly building his own town in Texas. The SpaceX billionaire is aiming to create a Texas utopia for his employees, including those who work for Tesla and his tunnel construction services company called The Boring Company. All right, so we've got people who work for a car manufacturer and in construction are going to live in a town owned by a billionaire there where they can all work there. Everything is awesome. In what way is this not a company town? The newspaper cites land deeds and other records, as well as people who are familiar with the project, as saying that boring employees have already begun to explore incorporating the Bastrop County town, which would be named Snailbrook, a nod to Boring Co.'s mission of building machines that move faster than a snail. According to Austin's KVUE TV, there are already modular homes on the swath of land, which is about 35 miles from Austin and adjacent to under construction Tesla and Boring facilities. This is not in Austin. We're 35 miles outside of Austin. Are there other suburbs nearby? Is there other civilization nearby? Or are people going to be living in a town solely for the factories that they're working at? I'm, a, I'm really concerned about this, you guys. County executives told the Wall Street Journal that Musk and others charged with leading the project are looking to move quickly. The newspaper reported that Musk consulted with Grimes, his former girlfriend, as well as Kanye West on the project. So as we know, Grimes left Elon Musk a long time ago after they had some kids with names that sound like they could have been made up by a password generator. I didn't talk about this on this channel, but on the Your Morning Guru channel, we did do a stream when Kanye was talking about buying up a town and creating his own town and potentially his own cult. I don't think, I haven't heard anything further on that. I think maybe Kanye has decided to chill and lay low for a bit, we can hope, but I don't think Kanye is not exactly someone you necessarily want in your corner right at this moment. They're very respectful of us, Adina Lewis, Bastrop County Director of Tourism and Economic Development, told the newspaper, but they're in a hurry. Okay, so she's like, all right, they're respecting our town, but they are moving kind of quick on this. The fact that they're moving quick on it is also uh, kind of scary for me. Why do we need a company town right now or ever? The outlet also detailed a 2020 meeting Musk had with a Travis County official and then Austin Mayor Steve Adler as proof of the Twitter owner's intention of expanding his empire in the area, and rather quickly. What he wanted from the city was speed, Adler told the paper. Deeds obtained by the outlet show that Musk has already purchased at least 3,500 acres in the Austin area, but officials familiar with the situation said Musk could own close to double that number in actuality. That's huge. That's huge. Bastrop County has already approved a number of streets in the area and a Montessori school is slated for the project KVUE reported. So I will say I really like Montessori schools as a concept. I've never gone to one, but from what I've heard and from talking to other people in education and things like that, the whole concept behind them of giving students a lot of autonomy over creating their own schedule, of giving them goals and learning objectives, and then having them figure out how to problem solve on their own rather than having a more micromanaging type of approach. I do think Montessori schools in general seem to be a good approach to education, although I'm not an expert on them. So if anyone has other information, please let me know. I'm not going to make a video on that entirely since I don't know the ins and outs of it. However, the part that scares me here is that we're putting a school in the town owned by Elon Musk. Elon Musk is over. Remember when Kanye was talking about making a school? Remember the WeWork video? I put out a WeWork video like two years ago where I talked about is WeWork a cult? And part of what I talked about in it was this idea of We Grow, which was the school that WeWork founders, Adam and Rebecca Newman, that they created created within the WeWork facility overall for the idea of, okay, if you work for WeWork, you can live in the We Live apartments, and then you can send your kids to school at the We Grow school where they will be indoctrinated into the hippie capitalist cult. That's really what they called it. They called it like a capitalist commune or something. It, like it didn't make any sense, but that's what Adam Newman was going for. But essentially he was going for a cult without saying it in those words. Once you start putting people's kids involved in this, that's what, like, you want the whole family invested. When it's a cult, you want the whole family to be invested into it. That gives me cult red flags, too. By the way, this is all alleged. This is just me over here saying that, like, this seems like it could be cult adjacent. I am not saying, I'm not saying with any definitive statement over here that Elon Musk is absolutely and definitely running a cult. I'm just saying that... The idea of building a company town, of wanting people to live their life where they're working, wanting them to live their life and have send their kids to school in a town that is owned by the person who also owns the company that you work for 
it's so easy for that to become a cult. It's not even funny. Like, it's so easy for that to become a cult. So I'm curious where this is going to go. I am absolutely going to keep following this story and see what happens next. But I think we all should be warned and be on the lookout for what might happen with this. Because if this does continue going the way that it does, this very easily could turn into a cult or at the very least a company town, which is an extremely exploitative way of treating your workers and your employees. So I hope that there's some way to put a stop to this. I, I don't know uh, exactly what that might be, but I'm open to people's thoughts in the comments below about all of this because I think that this is just extremely scary. So I do not support Elon Musk buying up a town. I do not think he should be doing this. I think this is a very bad move. In general, I don't support billionaires buying towns. It, it just, it has so many ways it could go wrong. And as we saw from looking at the history behind company towns, it can really easily turn into things that are slavery adjacent and cult adjacent. So I think we really need to be warned and be on the lookout for this. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this in the comments below. I really do think this is something that more people need to be talking about because of how scary this is. But otherwise, I will see you guys again later this week. In the meantime, though, please continue to support small businesses, not billionaires who want to buy up whole towns. Bye! Let's go! We're on a mission from God. Because the world is run by the man. Everyone having fun?